I am Dr. Anil Kumar, Lead Consultant Cardiologist of Aster Cardiac Sciences based at Aster Med City, Kochi. Globally, actually cardiovascular disease is the number one killer and more so in India, it has topped the list of uh, diseases which cause mortality and uh, loss of working days and loss of quality of life. And in India, this, this has been seen in the younger population and more so in Kerala where the heart attacks are seen at the age of 30 onwards, 30 to 40, 45. And let me tell you that this is happening in the younger ages only in the recent couple of decades. It is not the story two decades back when we were training, when heart attacks were happening only at 60 to 70 years of age. Now it's happening at a much younger population and sometimes people are not even aware. If you realize earlier sons used to take their fathers to hospitals. Now fathers are coming with their young sons and daughters, sons more commonly working people who are coming with the, in the peak of their life with heart attacks. In uh, Kerala, what we are noticing is that the stress level of the modern day life is increasing the incidence of lifestyle diseases. Now, when I mean lifestyle diseases, it's because of a change of lifestyle over the last few decades from a more exercise oriented work life to a more sedentary life and the long working hours with no time for relaxation, which is causing all these lifestyle diseases. Now, the lifestyle diseases include high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, add to this lack of sleep. All these things are increasing the risk of creating blocks in the blood vessels. And it can affect the heart, it can affect the brain, it can affect any of the blood vessels. And you add smoking onto this, which is still prevalent. The, the, our country, the smoking levels have not shown a decline yet. According to recent statistics, even in Kerala, an educated society, 25% of the males are smokers. And add smoke to all these lifestyle diseases, you have the real mix for developing major blocks in arteries to the heart. And that's why heart attacks are going up in this part of the world. And you have to understand there is beyond all these risk factors, there is a racial and a genetic bias towards developing heart disease. Indians, not only in Kerala in, or in any other part of India, wherever they settle down, even the second generation Indians, as far as in Ghana, in Africa or in Canada, have higher increased incidence of heart disease. And this has been documented in the published literature over the last 10 to 15 years. Actually, uh, we should be educating the masses on the need to have a healthy lifestyle. At least spend half an hour for exercise every day. Control your risk factors. Anyone above the age of 30 years, considering the younger incidence of heart attacks, anyone above the age of 30 years should know their blood cholesterol, should know their blood pressure, should uh, cut down all the activities which can lead to increased atherosclerosis, like stop smoking, should not even encourage anyone to start smoking and uh, control all the other risk factors, especially if you have a family history. If you have a family history of heart disease, the blocks come earlier in life and you add on to that uh, early onset of diabetes and blood pressure, you get these blocks much earlier. So if you have somebody in your family who has a heart disease, you make sure that you know your numbers. That was a WHO message also for preventing heart disease. Know your numbers. You should know your blood pressure, you should know your sugar, cholesterol and maintain ideal body weight. So this is one way of preventing blocks. Now, as a public strategy, we can even teach this message to the students in the schools and the colleges and prevent heart disease in the next generation. Even the students in the colleges and schools can go and educate their parents about this. For that, we can develop a program, something easily taught to schools. And I have devised one such mnemonic, escape from heart disease. My escape has a double S. So, E stands for eating healthy, have a healthy eating pattern, have more fruits and vegetables in your diet and less of fatty foods, sugar control, make sure that you have normal sugars or if your sugar is elevated, control that, smoking cessation, encourage smoking cessation across the population and prevent the initiation of smoking in schools. We had a school program where we would educate the children not to take up smoking, cholesterol control and aspirin for select few, earlier the concept was Everyone above the age of 40 should take aspirin. Now, that is not the concept. You can increase the risk of bleeds in your stomach if everyone across the board takes aspirin. The high risk people should take aspirin and people who have undergone bypass or angioplasty should take aspirin. And the P in my escape stands for pressure control. Blood pressure should not be elevated. A high blood pressure can lead to heart attacks, strokes and kidney failure. Commonest cause of kidney failure is uncontrolled high blood pressure. It's not the medicines which you have to be scared of. Medicine does not cause kidney failure. It's uncontrolled high blood pressure which causes kidney failure. And my last E is for exercise regularly. 
at least 30 minutes of exercise. So you can escape from heart disease by following this lifestyle. And I suggest that we should include this sort of uh, easy to learn cardio healthy lifestyle pattern and how to escape from heart disease in the school curriculums, in the colleges, and even talk to people in the workplace and encourage such healthy living styles which can prevent heart disease. The ideal thing would be to have a vaccination. You take a vaccination, you are protected from heart disease for life. But that has still not happened. Scientists are genuinely working on this. It may be 10 to 20 years away, but now off late last year, we have a licensed product which can be taken as an injection once a month to control your cholesterol for a month. You don't need to daily take your cholesterol meter. You don't need to remember that. That is called PCSK9 inhibitors. This will in decrease the circulating cholesterol in the blood and increase the uptake into the liver and destroy the bad cholesterol. So that is coming out and we may see the use of such injections for controlling cholesterol. And maybe now we have once monthly injections. Later we may have a yearly injection or a five yearly injection. Let us hope medical progress shows us the way. Actually we all know now most of the blocks in the heart circulation can be cleared by stents. Everyone knows about stents. Absorbable stents are coming up, but these are still the first generation of absorbable stents. Studies have to have shown their efficiency, but the safety has to be proven over the long term. We will have more of stents which will get absorbed. That will be the future which we are seeing. Beyond that, if you know valve diseases, we are treated by replacing the valves. Now we have an option of implanting the valves without surgery, by just like you do angiogram, percutaneous valve implantation. It's called TAVI. Just being licensed in India, around, uh, around the world there has been good numbers done in US and Germany. We are about to adopt the technology and you can hear about percutaneous valve changes happening frequently in India now. That is the second thing. The third thing is heart transplantation. Heart transplantation also is gaining, especially in this part of the world. Kerala has become much more aware about the benefits of heart transplantation in general and heart transplantation is picking up. And you can see hearts being transferred from one metro to the next metro. To in search of the correct uh, recipient for hearts. So heart transplantation is also growing up in a big way. The Kerala government has been very active in this. There is a Kerala network for organ sharing. There is a website and all the transplant hospitals are linked to this network and in fact it is the government which allots the organ. Once you have a brain dead donor available, his heart, his liver, his kidneys, cornea are all available for transplant. The hospital informs the nodal agency which then allots according to the available recipients their blood groups and their matching and that way the government is very proactive and that is encouraging many more hospitals to take up this transplant program. The public awareness is also very high with hearts being airlifted and that being in the, in the TV network, in the press and the public are now more and more encouraged. Even in our hospital a lot of donations are happening towards organ donations and these are being flown across this part of the country to needy patients. In cardiology, we have a heart team approach. It's not that a patient comes to a surgeon, he gets a bypass. He comes to an angioplasty, he gets an angioplasty. We sit together, meet, discuss the merits and demerits of the illness of the patient. And we work as a team and decide as to what is the best treatment given or to be given to this patient. In fact, even last week, a patient with three blocks came into the surgeon. He could very well have done bypass surgery, but he decided that angioplasty is the better option for this patient and we did angioplasty for him. So it's a team, heart team concept is picking up all around the world, even for this percutaneous valve approaches, the whole team should decide. It's not the surgeon separate and the cardiologist separate. We have to sit together as a team. So it is a heart team which sets the ASTA cardiac science apart from the rest of the world. And we have the best of technology and the latest in uh, cardiac technology to use on the patients. More than having just the technology, we have the teamwork to make sure that the best treatment is given to the patient. It is just not enough to just put a stent into a patient, fill, fill it, shut it, forget it. That should not be the motto for treatment. You have to follow up these patients. In fact, more than treating diseases, cardiologists as a group should form a strategy to prevent the disease. It's affecting everyone in modern day life. It can be your relative, it can be your son, daughter in the next generation. So it's, it should be our social responsibility to prevent heart diseases and to detect them early and treat them. And more importantly, the aim of the cardiologist should be, or the cardiac surgeon should be to get the person back usefully to the society. So in that way, it's not just putting an, a stent into an artery. You should make sure that you should teach the, the patient about how to prevent further problems, how to make sure that the stent doesn't block, how to prevent new blocks. 
so the holistic approach to cardiology education should include inducting the new cardiology trainees into this concept of uh, preventive cardiology uh, early detection and then treatment rather than getting out rather than churning out angioplasties by the dozen we need to have patients taken care of completely by the cardiologist in the days to come technology has come in a big way into cardiology i see more of robotic procedures I see more of nanotechnology coming into the field and I see lot of technology coming in from India itself. Now with this make in India concept, we have lot of Indian companies who are coming out with good stents. They are even coming up with this percutaneous valves and we will have the cost coming down in the future. Any new technology which comes in will have a cost to start with. But I am sure with the make in India concepts coming in and we are having the technology to do as well as the West. So if we have good clinical trials to show that our technology is on par with the West, we can have affordable health care for cardiology for the masses.